Welcome to First Baptist Church in Eminence, Kentucky, a church where the cross is lifted up. God is good. They that worship him, let us worship in spirit and in truth. Let us pray. Gracious Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being so kind, waking us up and starting us on our way. Father, you watched over us and you just bless us and bless us and bless us. And we're just so thankful for your goodness and kindness and mercy. Father, you are just masterful at taking care of us. Solid rock, unbroken. And Father, we just thank you for blessing us. Father, we thank you for this congregation. Continue to bless each and every member here. And bless those who may be sick among us, Father. Continue to watch over them and keep them. Thank you for our musicians. 
Thank you for our choir. Thank you for our pastor and associate ministers, our deacons, and then our sisters who are also worshiping with us. Bless this entire congregation, young people, old people, all alike. Father, bless this city. Continue to watch over Eminence. Keep your arm of protection around them. Now be with us throughout the furthest of this service. Go with our speaker. Continue to bless him and watch over him. Father, we ask all this in your name. If it be thy will, let us all say amen, 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 amen. and amen. Our responsive reading this morning comes, uh, is a blessing from God. It's number 590 in our hymn book. Blessings from God, 590 in our hymn book. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Who forgiveth all things, iniquities, who he healeth all thy diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. Who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembers that he never does. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourish. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children. To such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his words. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of all his domain. Bless the Lord, O oh, my soul. Amen.
Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 8, beginning at verse number 23 through verse number 27. Matthew, chapter 8, verse 23 through 27. The Bible says, and when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him, awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful? O oh, ye of little faith. Then he arose and rebuked, rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? We read from Matthew chapter 8, verses 23 through 27. We will now have pastoral emphasis by Reverend Charles Duncan, Jr. I'd say good morning to everyone. Good morning. Trust that things are going well with you. How you doing, Michael? Amen, amen. Yeah, trust that things are going well with you. I uh, want to just uh, thank, thank you again for uh, last Sunday's celebration. For I'm thankful for the 20 years of being your pastor and for the, uh, I don't know how many more years it is, uh, since 1975 of, of coming here and, and f fellowshipping uh, with you all all of this time, getting to know you and you getting to know me. And, and sometimes that clashes, I know it, and, and you know it too. Uh, but you know what will help, help with the clash? You already know. This, that helps with the clash. That, 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 that keeps me from saying, well, this is what I think. And it keeps you from saying, well, this is what I think. When, when, when we all learn to, what did the Lord say? Then, then, then there won't be any clashes. We'll just be moving right along amen amen how, how how many i'm just talking how how many of us want to uh let our light shine bright in eminence <laughs> to 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 the to the extent that people not, not so we can brag or anything like that, but to the extent that, that people look, look at First Baptist and say, if you want to know about the Lord, you go watch the people at First Baptist. You, you go talk to them and fellowship with them. How many want that to happen? Amen. Hey, amen. amen. We... We are, we are change eminence and, 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 and start changing the world, too. And some people might say, woo, that's a whole lot. Sure is. Sure is. <laughs> but but did, didn't our Lord and Savior come to save the world? He, he, he didn't just come to save eminence. He came to save the world. And we are his lights. Amen, amen, amen. Thank God for the beautiful flowers. You know I like them. 
you know I like I'm trying to figure if I know what kind they are, but I don't. <laughs> but, <laughs> but but I just know they are pretty. And, and I like beautiful flowers. Amen. Amen. Time for us to pray. Lord, we thank you. We don't know how many times you've done it, but it's been a whole lot that you brought us through another week, provided for our needs. And because you are faithful, you allow us to be faithful. And so we've brought our gifts again this week faithfully, Lord, because you are faithful. And we pray that you'll bless the gifts that we brought and that you will continually show us the way how to use them in a way that makes you known to the whole world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's time for all of us who want to come before the Lord and to pray. It's altar call time. Every time we find ourselves in, in this place, in God's house, it is because he has blessed us with a week's worth of blessings and we find ourselves here again. God is a good God and therefore he just keeps on being good to us. That's just how he is. Let us all bow our heads and let us all be praying in our hearts. Gracious Father in heaven, Here we are again, and we realize and we acknowledge that it's only because and it's all because of you. We had to face some things this week. But you brought us through. We had to suffer some things this week. But you made it better. We allowed worry to get at us this week. But you let us know that you're with us. And now here we are, Lord, to worship you because you're worthy. Here we are to praise you because you're such a wonderful Father to us all. Lord, it's the sincere desire of our hearts that you just keep guiding us in the way that we should go. That you keep speaking to us, Lord, and helping us to hear you and helping us 
to obey you. Lord, we submit ourselves to you. You just heard us talking about it. That you make us lights that shine brighter and brighter. Not that we might be glorified, but that you might be glorified. That all the members of our families, that all of our neighbors, the ones we know and the ones that we do not know, the ones that will move into this community while we're still here, we pray, Lord, that we will be lights to them, that we will be examples to them. helping them to understand that we are the redeemed and that you came to redeem them as well. Your word tells us, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let it be our daily walk that every opportunity you set before us, we make it known that you sent your son to redeem all of humanity to buy us back, to take us back from what sin and the devil has done to us. Thank you, Lord, for being in our homes with us throughout this week. Thank you, Lord, for just blessing us with blessing after blessing. In the name of Jesus, in whom we have bountiful gifts. In the name of Jesus, who keeps pouring out on us the goodness of God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Lord.
Let us look now at our thoughts for the week. Quiet minds that rest in the Lord are not perplexed or frightened, but go on in fortune or misfortune at their private pace like a clock during a thunderstorm. Oh, how great peace and quietness would we possess should we cut off all vain anxiety and place all of our confidence in the Lord. Amen.
He is worthy. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Did I hear somebody say, wow? <laughs> Amen, wow. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Sundays are blessings from God. So are Mondays through Saturdays. But it's, it's something special about Sundays. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I know where well, you may not, but I do. Sometimes I think about Sunday as being the last day in the week. But it's not. <laughs> it's the first day in the week. It's, it's the day that God has set aside to, to rejuvenate us. So they say, say, let's go. Let's go. We got more to do, and I got more to show you. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 8. Text verses 23 through 27. I think I'm just going to read verses 26 and 27. Text, the verses read, the Gospel of Matthew, and the whole Bible. Let us pray. Father, forgive us, for we all have sinned and come short of your glory. So, Father, let your word go forth. Even though we've read and heard this text many times before, your word is always fresh and alive, and therefore it can always bless us. So let your word go forth, and let it do what you would have it do, to do for each and every one of us at this point in our lives. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen. Verse 26. And Jesus saith unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Amen. We're still talking about 
the authority of Jesus. The authority of Jesus. Keep your Bibles open. As we walk again through this very familiar episode in the life of Jesus, along with some of the first disciples who had committed themselves to him, let us keep in mind that Jesus had been very busy doing ministry. Preaching, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Teaching and fulfilling the truth of God's word. And meeting the needs of many, many people that nobody else could meet. The text says, and when Jesus was entered into a ship that was to go over to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. His disciples, who were some of the first to commit themselves to him, followed him. Now, if we are not paying close enough attention we will miss this truth that disciples of Jesus follow him. When he goes, they go. Where he goes, they go. What he does, they do. Because they want to be with him. They want to learn of him. They have a sense that they do not quite understand yet that they are being drawn to Jesus. They have a sense that they do not quite understand yet that they need Jesus. And so does everybody else. And they have a sense that there is so much more to Jesus than even what they have heard or what they have seen. So when Jesus was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And while they were going across the Sea of Galilee, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves. The word tempest speaks of a hurricane type storm that also causes a shaking like an earthquake. But while all of that was happening, Jesus was asleep. While the hurricane type storm was raging blowing the ship from side to side no doubt making a whole lot of noise while the earth was quaking shaking the ship and the waves up and down filling the ship with water no doubt making a whole lot of noise. 
And while the disciples were struggling with all their experience and might to keep the ship from being filled with water, yelling to each other at the top of their voices, no doubt making a whole lot of noise, Jesus was asleep. Now, there are some that can sleep so soundly that they can sleep through almost anything. But that was not what happened with Jesus. And what he said in the text will prove it. However, before we look at what Jesus said, let us keep in mind that it was a well-known fact that storms would suddenly arise on the Sea of Galilee. Those first disciples, Peter and Andrew, James and John, that were with Jesus at that particular time were professional fishermen who often fished from their ships on the Sea of Galilee. So they had no doubt gotten caught in storms before and made it through. This was not their first rodeo. The text does not tell us how long those experienced fishermen fought the storm, did all they could to make it through. They no doubt used all of their skill and knowledge until they realized that their situation had become almost hopeless. It was then that they decided to call on Jesus, who was asleep. My brothers and sisters, I am sure that all of us who are here in this place and all who are on Zoom and Facebook right now who are following Jesus have had storms of one kind or another to suddenly, without warning, to arise in our lives. And after we had done all that we could think of to do, and after we had gone to this one or that one, and after we came to realize that our situation was next door to hopeless, then we decided, praise God, to call on Jesus. This text is telling us that Jesus in the flesh was not exempt from storms. And therefore, those who follow him will not be exempt from storms. This text is telling us that when disciples of Jesus find themselves in a storm, while they are following him, Jesus is right there with you in the storm. This text is telling us that it is natural to fight storms with all that you are. But when the storms get to be too much for you, as they often will be, 
praise God, that you have right there with you an advocate, a friend, a deliverer, a Lord and Savior who you can go to at any time who has the divine authority over every stone. And his disciples came to him. For that is what disciples of Jesus do. And awoke him. This is not just the picture of Jesus being asleep because he was exhausted from doing ministry. It was a picture of him resting in God. It was a picture of his confidence in the providential care of God. It was a picture of his humbling himself to God. It was a picture of his knowing that without a doubt, he and his disciples were safe in the hands of God. His disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us. We perish. These words need to be a continuing, sincere prayer by disciples of Jesus for the entire human race because of the rising storms that are caused by our sins. Go home. Turn on your radio or TV, and it won't be long before you know that disciples of Jesus need to be praying for all humanity, Lord, save us. We perish. And Jesus saith unto them, why are you fearful or full of fear, O ye of little faith? The ship was being filled with water, and the disciples were being filled with fear. Now, some have said and some will say, why doesn't the Lord just stop us from sinning? Just stop bad things from happening. Just stop Storms from rising up in our lives. Well, God is a good and loving and wise Father. And according to His goodness, His love, His wisdom, and his grace and mercy, we are saved by faith. That is a faith that willingly chooses to believe, to rely on, and to obey his son, Jesus. You see, willing faith must be tested in order 
for us to grow stronger. It must be allowed to be tempted so that we can learn how to overcome. It must suffer through trials and tribulations so that we can mature and be able to endure so that we can become steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. So, Jesus says to his disciples, why are you being filled with fear? You are with me, and I am with you, and I have the authority to make God's will a reality in your life. I have shown you that I have the authority to speak the very word of God. I have shown you that I have the authority over all kinds of sickness and disease. I have shown you that I have the authority to cast out every evil spirit. And I am about to show you that I have the authority over the winds and the sea. O oh, ye of little faith. The disciples had faith, but Jesus said that it was little faith, meaning that it was lacking, that it was weak, that it was not strong enough yet. And Jesus was at work teaching them that if they would keep on following him, keep on learning of him, and keep on obeying him, then their faith would grow and mature and be able to endure no matter what. The text says that then, then Jesus arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. My brothers and sisters, do you see? what I see. I hope you do. Let me see if I can help you. When Jesus was awakened, there was no sign of his being agitated at all. He heard and saw the anxiety and fear and worry in his disciples. But he was still laying there. And he said to them, why are you being filled with fear? O ye of little faith. Then, then he arose 
and rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was a great calm. It was not a great calm just because the winds and the sea had settled down. But it was a great calm because the hearts of his disciples had settled down. And because at the authority of the words of Jesus, hearts have continued even to this day to be settled down. And faith has increased and matured. After witnessing, once again, the authority of Jesus, the text says that the men marveled saying, what manner of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? Well, he is the kind of man who in the beginning was with God and was God. He is the kind of man who was born of a virgin and conceived by the Holy Spirit. He is the kind of man who looked beyond all our faults and saw our need, who willingly suffered the cross for the sake of all humanity. He is the kind of man who will never deceive you, leave you, or forsake you. He is the kind of man who gives us his peace, which is the peace that passes all understanding. He is the kind of man who works all things together for good to them that love the Lord, to them who are the call according to his purpose. Jesus is the kind of man whose very word gives life and power and wisdom. And when we walk in his Word, it makes God's will a reality in our lives. Jesus is the kind of man who brought to us the kingdom of We have so much in Jesus that we need to be taking advantage of. That we need to be letting him make it real in our lives. A lot of times in all of our lives still, We run to Jesus, and he's, he's, he's resting. He knows what's going on. He's not worried about it, and he's wondering why we're worried about it when we are his disciples. He says, trust me. I got the authority over whatever it is that is upsetting you, that is keeping you up at night. 
I have the authority over whatever it is. I'm the kind of man that you can depend on for everything. Let us pray. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Lord, sometimes, and it's right for us to do this, it's good when we do it. We look at ourselves and we rightly say, who are we that you are mindful of us? Who are we that your mind is full of us? But it is, and we are so grateful, Lord. Help this truth, Lord, not to be just words on the paper of the Bible, but help this truth to be deep down in our hearts for us to live thereby. In the name of Jesus, who has the authority over everything that gets in our way. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Invitation is extended. Jesus says, come Follow me. Put your faith, your trust, your dependence on me. And watch what I will do for you. Don't you know you are safe in my hands and that nothing can pluck you out of my hands? Don't you know that nothing can separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus? Will you come this morning? Now is the accepted time.
It's time now for us to partake of the Lord's Supper. to think about all that Jesus came and did for us. To think about how he showed his love for us. Think about the sacrifice that there's no way for us to measure that he gave for us. He gave his all for us. And to symbolize that, he instituted his Lord's Supper. And as he instituted his Lord's Supper, preparing us to remember what he's done for us and that because of what he's done for us, he is always still with us. He took bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he said, this bread is my body, which is given for you. He said, do this in remembrance of me. So let us eat together. Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son who sacrificed his life on the cross so that we could have eternal life. In his name we pray. Amen. Likewise, Jesus took the cup which contained the fruit of the vine and he blessed it. And he said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. He said, do this in remembrance of me. So let us drink together. Again, Father, we pray, thanking you for the gift of your Son, who painfully poured out every drop of his blood and washed away all of our sin so that we could live with you forever. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. 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 Thank God for Sundays. Let us all stand. Let us remember that those who are orchestrating the uh, pre-Thanksgiving fellowship meal for next Sunday, where you want them to meet at, Dwayne? Right there where Brother Dwayne Roberts is. Let us all bow. Thank you, Lord, for another worship experience. May your word abide in our hearts and keep speaking to us throughout this coming week. Letting us know that no matter what happens, we are ready for it because you are with us. And now under him who has authority over everything. Under him who loves us so much that he would never let anything separate us from him. Under him who washed away all our sins and who will one day present us faultless before the throne of God with exceeding great joy we'll be shouting unto him be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now, henceforth, and forevermore, let us all sing. joining us here at First Baptist Church. We are located at 5706 South Main Street, Eminence, Kentucky. You may join our worship service in person, on Zoom, or Facebook Live at 11 a.m. every Sunday. Thank you again for joining us, and may God richly bless your life.